I think that when many people start writing their first book, the automatic response is probably to use Microsoft Word because it's the thing that we use at work and it's the thing that many of us have on our PCs at home. Microsoft Word, unfortunately, is something that you can't really avoid when you're writing and self-publishing books, even though it would not be my preferred choice for a writing tool. I always have to use it. And the bottom line with Microsoft Word is, unfortunately, that most editors are going to want to edit in Microsoft Word. So whatever you use to write your books, at some point, you're probably going to have to move it into a Microsoft Word document, and you're going to have to get your edits back as a Microsoft Word document. So that, unfortunately, is just something we're stuck with for the time being. Whatever tool you use, and there are many, many tools that can help you to write your book, you're probably going to end up back in Microsoft Word at some point. And I drift in and out of Microsoft Word. When I hand it over to my editor, it has to go in Microsoft Word, but then I bring it back into Scrivener, and then I may move it into Vellum, all sorts of places that I'm moving it around to, but Microsoft Word generally tends to be the document that is common for all author experiences. It's very hard to avoid it. So let's go take a look at Microsoft Word and I'll talk to you about the pros and cons of using it. This is an example of one of my uh, books. So this book was written in Scrivener and you'll see Scrivener in a later video. I exported it to a Microsoft Docx file, which is the latest version of Microsoft files. You might have a .doc extension at the end of yours. And this is how I hand my files over to my editor, who then goes through them with a fine tooth comb. So this wasn't written in Microsoft, it was exported to Microsoft. Then I emailed it to my editor, who then did all the changes that editors make and proofreaders make. Now, if I just show you this little magic button at the top here, this is the, we're in the review menu of Microsoft Word. And at the moment, I've put no markup on it. I send a document to my editor like this, it look, that's what it looks like when she gets it. But when it comes back, it comes back with something called markup on it. And markup is when your editor goes through your script with a fine tooth comb, they make all sorts of changes. And actually the great thing that Microsoft does is that it tracks the changes. So as we scroll through this script here, you'll see that every change that my editor has made, every suggestion that's been made, has been tracked in Microsoft that I can then go through them one by one and either accept or reject those changes. And this unfortunately is why Microsoft Word is something that you have to use because actually that, that tracking of changes is actually uh, really powerful. It's a really essential tool when you're editing books and nothing really quite does it like Microsoft Word. And actually, if it does do the tracking changes, unfortunately, it's not widely used. When you go to editors, chances are most of them are using Microsoft Word. So it, somebody might have invented a really cool tool for doing this, but actually, when push comes to shove, this is what the editors use. So you're stuck with Microsoft Word, as I said right at the beginning of this particular video. The other thing about using Microsoft Word is that when you come to format your book for, say, CreateSpace or Ingram Spark, again, unless you send it away and pay somebody to do this for you, you're going to get stuck with using Microsoft Word again. Now, let me just change screens here and show you my grid trilogy. This is the first book that I ever formatted for CreateSpace use. And you'll notice automatically that we're getting into all sorts of interesting situations here in that we've got to have page numbers on there. We have to have alternate book titles and author names just there. And we've also got to do things like making sure that we don't have all these gaps at the end of pages so that all the page layouts are very pleasant so that when they're on the printed page, they're going to look pretty good. Now. I've always done this myself. Frankly, I should probably pay for somebody to do it because it is quite an expert job. But again, I couldn't do it unless I did it in Microsoft Word, much as I don't like using Microsoft Word. So you'll see here that when you go to CreateSpace, part of the process of CreateSpace, and you'll see this elsewhere in another video, is that you tell CreateSpace what size your book is going to be. And CreateSpace then gives you a template, and this is a Microsoft Word template incidentally, a template that you could download and then move your book into that will put all these alternate odd even number pages, titles at the top, author title on the other page. So it, it, and it also 
again, somebody who knows more about this than me will talk you through this, but you'll notice that the, the margin margins here are so suitable so that when they're in page form, when they're in a physical book form, all of the gaps are going to look right in a book. Now, this is all technical stuff, but Microsoft Word and using the Create Space template allows you to do a pretty good job of it on your own. And this is another reason why you should consider using Microsoft Word. Now, later on in these videos, you're going to hear me and see me demonstrate the tools that I use to actually write and plan my books. But I think Microsoft Word is the one thing probably that most authors have in common. It's the one tool that we can't avoid. So love it or loathe it. I do loathe it, unfortunately. You've still got to use Microsoft Word and you might then need to get yourself a copy of this. If your budget can't stretch to Microsoft Word, there is a free alternative, which is called OpenOffice.org. OpenOffice.org. That is a free alternative to Microsoft Word. It opens Microsoft Word documents and it allows you to save your docu documents as Microsoft Word documents. So if your budget can't stretch to paying for Microsoft Word, then use OpenOffice.org and it will allow you quite happily to work with an editor, a proofreader who does use Microsoft Word. The documents are what are called backwards and forwards compatible, which is that it means that you can open Microsoft Word documents. It means your editor, your proofreader can open your documents. So it's a pretty good alternative to using Microsoft Word. The other thing that I will mention about Microsoft Word nowadays is that it comes as an annual subscription, which is how I have it. And it also comes with something called OneDrive. Uh, OneDrive, if you get Microsoft Word, will come as a free package. They'll give you a certain amount of storage. And what this does allow you to do then is to automatically save all of your writing in a cloud account. Now, this is something that we should talk about when we're talking about producing your books, because you absolutely must make sure that you back up your work. And because OneDrive is, is, is free, or it's, it's free when you get it with Microsoft Word, it'll give you loads of space for free, you should make sure that you're backing up everything that you write in the cloud at least, or onto a hard drive or a USB stick, but you must back up. Because Microsoft Word comes packaged with OneDrive, it saves you paying for Dropbox, which is the one that you'll hear many people use to back up their work. Uh, and so therefore you've got two things in one. You've got access to Microsoft Word, which everybody kind of uses, whether you like it or not, and you've got a backup tool as well. It's not a fortune every year, Microsoft Word. It's about, uh, I can't remember what I pay for, about £100 a year um, for the subscription. You can share it with other members. You can put it on all your devices, your laptop, your computer. I have it also on my mobile phone. So it's quite a good deal, but it is an essential tool if you're going to be doing self-publishing.